Hello YouTubers, today I'm going to talk to you about a, an interesting Visual Studio feature that is very, 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 I've been trying this feature for about a couple of weeks now, and I gotta say it's a very, very helpful feature, especially when it comes to the engineers that follow the test-driven uh, development approach, whether you have a pair or not, uh, whether your uh, business logic is, is too complex or not. Uh, this uh, live unit testing feature in Visual Studio seems to be something that is uh, very useful. It's very, um, uh, it'll save you a lot of time, definitely. So when you're having a, a, a project with some 3,000 uh, unit tests, you probably want to be able to um, uh, not have to run all the unit tests at once every time you're trying to test something, not having to go and look for the test in the files, where's my test? You know, even if even though you have your references, you could have like five or six tests that are referencing the same method and trying to iterate on different aspects of the method. You probably want to pay attention to, you know, um, instead of, you know, going and looking for the methods that will actually help you out, why don't you just use the live unit testing? So. Without any further ado, I'm going to start here a new project and I'm going to show you how this magic works. Let's just start a new project in here. Just a very simple project with a very simple unit testing functionality. I'm just going to go ahead in here and just create a simple uh, library, not even a an application or whatever, just a simple class library. And I'm going to have this class library just, you know, um, let's call it, you know, some library, <laughs> you know. Someone asked me the other day, you know, what, what's the hardest thing that when it comes to um, writing software? I said, you know, definitely naming naming projects and naming variables and all that it becomes a little bit uh, hectic. What should we call our variables? Anyway, so you have a class like that, and let's say, you know, do stuff. So this is a class, eh, do stuff. And and do stuff class basically takes in a a, a, a it has a um, a, a method and this method let's say it's a public void um, you know I don't know add two numbers right and or actually spell out name let's say print name and this uh, function has a name in it and it takes a string if I know how to spell string so here's a string and here's a name and this guy throws throw new not implemented exception like how every software should be written and then let's go ahead and write a unit test let's put in a unit test project a little x unit in there and this project will be do stuff so the app name is called some library so it's going to be some library dot unit dot tests some people prefer to say dot tests right um, if you're doing multiple different levels of testing like acceptance test and unit test and all that kind of stuff you probably want to go with um, with unit testing. Anyway, so this this guy is going to reference the other library, right? So let's go in, ahead in here in the references area and add a reference. And this reference is basically some library, right? And let's call this do stuff tests. Just trying to follow some naming convention here so things make sense. All right. And in here, let's just say should um, should return Mr. Name. Let's just say should return Mr. Name. So, you know, given that we have a name, let's call it Hassan. Right? And given that we have a, a, a our expected name should be Mr. Hassan. I don't know if you should take a space or not. I'll, I'll, I'll take the space out. And then when so in here we want to initialize our library uh, actually in here so basically I want to go and say var do stuff equal new do stuff and then in here when we're executing we're basically saying do stuff dot uh, print name right so instead of print name let's have it say return name return mister name get mister name something really simple that we can uh, work with in here let me zoom in a lot of people complained about the uh, so yeah so this here return uh, get mr. name right and I'm passing in here the name and this is my actual right let's go here and say 
uh, string actual name. And then at the bottom here, I'm basically saying then uh, assert equal uh, that my expected name equals my actual name. Right, so expected name and actual name. Just a very simple unit test, you know, that just runs and, and does things. If I do control RT, this guy should fail. I'm going to go fix it. And this is a unit test. Very simple uh, unit tested a, um, a piece of software. Just a simple functionality. This guy will fail, of course. And then we will talk about what happens next. So it's basically saying I expected that. This guy blew up. Let's go to get Mr. Name and sh just fix it. So I'm going to go here and say return uh, interpolation Mr. Name. Just like that. Very simple thing. Now I need to go and run my my test again. So if I go in here and click run all, that's one way. But if you have multiple tests, you can you're gonna have to run all these tests, and then you're gonna have to, to the for the whole thing to compile and then for the whole thing to pass. Now check this out. If I change something in my test, like say misses, like that, nothing happens. I have to run my test again to know whether the function is actually doing what it's supposed to do or not. On the contrary, there is this cool thing, cool feature that's called live unit testing in Visual Studio. And some people know about it, and some people heard of it, but they don't know how to enable it. And some people heard of it, they know how to enable it, they just didn't get, you know, the chance, like how do you, you know, where do you put it in what project and how to do all that stuff, the little details, right? Uh, this video is basically just about that. You could go into your solution and just go and say live unit testing and just click include. And if you saw include, you will notice something very interesting happening in your Visual Studio. We'll just give it a second, just one second. A little dialog will pop from the bottom. This is just as you saw, it's basically enabling unit testing. And then this weird, you know, little check marks will show on the left side. Now, <clears throat> um, this this um, little check mark on the left side that is happening is basically telling you about the changes, the code changes that you've made in your code, what impact did it do that it would actually affect the existing unit test? So if I go in here and say misses, misses name, what basically happens is that this guy immediately, immediately on spot will do, hey, by the way, you broke a bunch of tests. Like your code changes have broken a bunch of tests live on spot. So if, if, think about this from a scalability standpoint. Like I have some you know, let's say I've seen projects with five, six, seven thousand unit tests in them, right? And if you have seven thousand unit tests and you're changing one tiny thing and you don't know what would be the impact of that, it helps you a lot understand what what would be the code change that you're doing would impact. It's a very interesting feature and it's very easy to use. Um, and I really highly recommend it. This is just a very short recommendation video just so you can try this out. Uh, unfortunately, this feature is not available with uh, the um, the non uh, pro or it's not available with the community edition of Visual Studio. So if you're using pro or, or enterprise, you're definitely going to be able to see this feature. Uh, you're definitely going to be able to benefit from it. And it's going to help you a lot with your development. It's, it's expediting your development, giving you a faster feedback and helping you out um, with uh, with your development. So if you have any questions, comments, any uh, feedback, if you have tried this feature before, if you have uh, played with it for a while, but you stopped using it maybe in the past because of some, you know, issues that you ran into. I really highly recommend that you try it again in Visual Studio 2019 with the latest uh, update. I think I think it's 16.4. Uh, it's super performant, super fast, and I think um, you would definitely benefit from it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out. You know, drop a comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.